This is Land of Havilah, John 8b. We left off in the middle of Jesus teaching in the temple, and quote, as he spoke these things, many believed in him, end quote. Now, verse 31, Jesus therefore said to those Jews who had believed in him, if you remain in my word, then you are truly my disciples. Comment, Jesus is talking to new believers and he says, remain in my word. A new disciple must remain in the word, quote, as newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, that with it you may grow, 1 Peter 2, 2. Now coming up, the subject of freedom. He's talking about being liberated from lies, verse 32. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Comment, the truth will make you free. It's a famous saying which originated here with Jesus, but what was the context of it? To quote the whole thing without interruption, if you remain in my word, then you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, end quote. So he was talking about the truth of the word. It'll make us free, his word. To the extent possible, we must make sure we're working with the right set of facts. If our assumptions are wrong about the world, we labor in vain. But if we know the facts about the world, we know what we should do. It goes back to what Jesus said, remain in my word. If we remain in the word, we're truly his disciples. We'll know the truth and the truth will set us free. We'll know the truth about God, his existence, about Christ, his lordship, about the existence of Satan and demons, and about the other various worldviews out there that are in some way contrary to all that. Coming up, when Jesus said the truth will make you free, his listeners think they're already free because, after all, they're not bondservants to any man. They're Abraham's offspring, they say. They've inherited the truth of God from Abraham, and they're free like Abraham was free. Verse 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's offspring and have never been in bondage to anyone. How do you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most certainly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is the bondservant of sin. Comment, they're assuming they know the truth because of their lineage, their family line coming from Abraham, as some of us might assume that because we were born into a Christian family or into a Christian country that we're Christians. But Jesus is telling them, oh no, the truth isn't something you absorb from your ancestors or from your society. It's something you get only if you remain in my word. You don't know the truth, Jesus says, and because of it, you're not free. You're bondservants of sin. Verse 35, a bondservant doesn't live in the house forever. A son remains forever. If therefore the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Comment, a son inherits from his father but not a bondservant. So we want to be sons of God, not bondservants of sin, lest we be left empty. A son remains in the household forever, but a bondservant gets released from the household when his contract expires, and he takes nothing with him. Sin will leave us empty. But, quote, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's offspring, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I say the things which I have seen with my father, and you also do the things which you have seen with your father. They answered him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham didn't do this. You do the works of your father. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, God. Comment, God said Abraham would be the father of multitudes, in number like the sand on the seashore, and that he, Yahweh, would be their God. Abraham, quote, was called the friend of God, Isaiah 41, 8. Jesus says, you're right that Abraham is your ancestor, but you're trying to kill me. So don't claim Abraham as your father. He wouldn't claim you. When Jesus said, Abraham isn't your father, some of them took that he was questioning their lineage, quote, our father is Abraham. But some of them realized he was speaking in a spiritual sense, and they defended themselves by claiming, God is our father. Verse 42, therefore Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came out and have come from God. For I haven't come of myself, but he sent me. Why don't you understand my speech? Because you can't hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. 
he was a murderer from the beginning and doesn't stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks on his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this cause you don't hear, because you are not of God. Comment. Jesus says you're disconnected from God and connected to your father Satan. Your father Satan wants to kill me, therefore you want to kill me. Your father Satan won't admit the truth, therefore you won't admit the truth. Satan won't receive me, therefore you won't receive me. But if it's me that's wrong, you ought to be able to find some sin in me. Show me even one. Verse 48. Then the Jews answered him, don't we say well that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Comment. Historically, Samaritans, quote, didn't believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, 2 Kings 17, 14, and 15. Hundreds of years previously, God removed the Israelite Samaritans from the land and replaced them with foreigners who were not descendants of Abraham. The new inhabitants gave some acknowledgement to God, but they also worshipped idols, 2 Kings 17:41. So a Samaritan is someone whose religious concepts are completely corrupted. After Jesus called his listeners sons of Satan, they had a choice of either agreeing with him, which of course they weren't going to do, or they could try to find some fault with him, which they did. They accused him of various things, of being religiously corrupted, of having a demon, and we gather from what's coming up, they accused him of seeking glory for himself. Verse 49, Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. But I don't seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most certainly, I tell you, if a person keeps my word, he will never see death. Comment. God told Adam, in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. But he ate of it and kept walking and breathing. There was no annihilation. The death God was talking about was much worse than annihilation. Something died in Adam's soul. He wasn't able to live in the presence of God any longer. There was unbearable shame. Therefore, when Jesus said, If a person keeps my word, he will never see death, he was speaking spiritually. Adam died a spiritual death, not a physical one, until later. We die a physical death, but not a spiritual one. We will never taste of spiritual death. Our spirits will live on, and by the way, our bodies will be raised on the last day. 1 Corinthians 6.14 Verse 52. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets, and you say, If a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? Comment. They say Abraham died, but is that true? The scripture says of Abraham, quote, Abraham gave up his spirit and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Genesis 25, 8. So he died, the verse says he did, but it also says he was gathered to his people, which maybe implies that he didn't die in the sense of full annihilation. In fact, it was said in general of Israelites that they were gathered to their people or to their fathers. For example, speaking of the generation of Joshua, the text says, quote, all that generation were gathered to their fathers, Joshua 2.10. So it's left up to interpretation. Did Abraham really die as Jesus' listeners claim he did? Or as Jesus put it, was he one of those that never tasted of death so that he was gathered fully conscious into the presence of his ancestors? But Jesus' listeners say, we know Abraham died, therefore we know you have a demon when you say, if a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death. They say, still in verse 53, the prophets died, who do you make yourself out to be? Comment, they want to know what kind of insanely inflated ego is this? that this man says his followers won't die, whereas even the great Abraham and the great prophets died. Verse 54. Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is our God. You have not known him, but I know him. If I said I don't know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Comment. Somehow Abraham saw the day of Jesus. He might have seen it prophetically while he was still walking on the earth, such as in a vision or revelation, but we don't have any record of it. 
Alternatively, Abraham is still conscious, and when Jesus arrived on the earth, Abraham was aware of it. Whichever way it was, Abraham rejoiced to see it. Verse 57, The Jews therefore said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most certainly, I tell you, before Abraham came into existence, I am. Comment. That's how God identified himself to Moses, Exodus 3, 6. He instructed Moses to call him, I am. Therefore, when Jesus used the same particular identification, when he said, before Abraham came into existence, I am, he was very clearly claiming to be God on two counts. First, on the count of being I am, and second, that he existed before Abraham. Verse 59. Therefore, they took up stones to throw at him. Comment. They took up stones because they clearly understood the claim. Now they can add blasphemy to his list of alleged crimes. Still in verse 59. But Jesus was hidden and went out of the temple, having gone through the middle of them, and so passed by. Comment. Jesus was hidden. He walked out through the middle of them without being seen. He disappeared himself as if he were God himself. John 9 is next at landofhavilah.net. John 9.